What's up, YouTube? This is Robert Dunbar, training by Dunbar. I uh, wanted to shoot another video here for you guys on um, not overselling. Uh, and I'm gonna touch on a couple of different things as it comes to that. Uh, but what I want you to do first is make sure that after you watch the video, if you like it, hit the like. Uh, please subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. So on the bottom right-hand side of the screen, you'll see the subscribe uh, block, hit that and then hit the notification bell if you want to get notified when I drop my two videos a week. Why do I do that? To make sure that I can get my subscriptions up. The more subscriptions I have, the more videos I'll shoot. Right now I do two a week to make sure that you guys have some information on everything from mindset to sales, to personal development, uh, motivation, uh, or finding your purpose, working within your vision. Uh, I've now started booking some gigs for not-for-profits. So I do work with not-for-profits at no cost to them. Uh, I do ask though that you provide me information showing that you are a not-for-profit so that I'm not uh, providing that service for a company that is a for-profit company uh, because that is not in my mission statement. So uh, I want you guys to chime in on this one Put some comments on the bottom if you like what I'm saying, if you don't like what I'm saying, if you got a different opinion. Look, I love hearing different opinions. Uh, no hate mail. I normally get some anyway, but look, check this out. Uh, training by Dunbar. I'm Robert Dunbar, and I really enjoy working with people to help their experience in entrepreneurship get better. Um, I do everything from, like I said, sales to personal development to helping people transition from nine to five to being an entrepreneur because that's a big, big, big mindset change. And what I'm going to be starting with today as it comes to overselling is talking about a company that I work with personally, which is Legal Shield. I've been with Legal Shield for about nine years now. And uh, one of the products that I'm, um, I'm a certification trainer uh, um, on is our CDLP product, which is our commercial driver's legal plan product. So uh, I've had a lot of conversations with people who are overselling uh, and not knowing that. And uh, that can really hurt you in the field of sales. Uh, you want to be very relaxed and calm and honest and transparent when you're talking about what the product does. When you've got a great product, there's no need to oversell it. And sometimes we oversell it unintentionally because we subconsciously, sub subconsciously think that we're saying things that are true that aren't really true. And it, you know, you can he you hear things from other people. You hear somebody, you see somebody post something. You, you go to a training, you hear somebody say something. You go to uh, in a Roman, you hear somebody say something. Sometimes we we rob and duplicate information, and sometimes it's the wrong information. And then after you do it a few times, it gets passed on and passed on. And by the time it comes all the way back around, it's a totally um, disingenuous statement, and you think that you're actually saying something that's true. So let's talk a little bit about uh, the commercial driver's legal plan overselling that I see sometimes. So in the space that I'm in, a lot of times we train, me and a few other trainers, we train on pulling the company's safety score. And why do we do that? Not because we're nosy, not because we're being intrusive, uh, not because we're looking at people's private information because it's not private, it's public. Uh, we do that because we wanna make sure we can help the company. And in order for me to help a company, I need to know whether they need my help or not. Now, there are some people who prospect companies and when they don't even need help, they'll still go to them and say, hey, you've got a great score. Let's let, let's, let's let us help you keep that score, great score, which is a pitch that you can use and that does work. And that's not overselling. That's being honest. But when you find a company with something wrong, because I, I believe in LHF, you know, I, when I train, I train on LHF, which is low hanging fruit. You want to keep in mind that uh, the example I give when I'm training is that if I opened up a doctor's office, I want it to be opened up in a community full of sick people. Now, I know that sounds bad, but it's actually the truth. I don't want to open up a doctor's office in an area where people are walking their dogs, jogging every day, and they're all vegans. Why don't I want to do that? Because they're probably healthy and they're probably only going to get checkups once or twice a year when they get a certain age to make sure that they're still in good shape. I need you crawling to my doctor's office, banging on the door, asking me for a shot because you're sick. In other words, I don't make money as a doctor, so it's not a good industry for me to be in if I open up that doctor's office and the people that I'm providing services for aren't really sick. And I don't need you to have a common cold. I need you to have the flu. Does that make sense? 
I hope it does. And I hope you guys don't think that I'm being, you know, um, um, what do you call it? Or not being empathetic because I'm saying these things. I'm just giving this as an example. I don't want anybody to be sick. Um, obviously, I'm not a doctor, so I'm not looking for sick people. But I give you that example because I want you all to understand that when you're in the industry, to fix things, they need to be broken. Just like a, a police officer saying, I wish all the crime would stop. They don't really want that to happen because they wouldn't have a job. Now, in their mind, they may be thinking, yeah, they don't want an old lady's purse to get snatched. They don't want somebody's car window to be broken into. I mean, broken for so somebody could break in a car. Nobody, a cop doesn't want to see people get shot and people beat up and different issues that police are called for. They don't want to see domestic violence, but they also don't want crime to no longer be in existence because they wouldn't have a job. And that's just being honest. So they needed to be some crime for them to have a place to work, although they don't really want to see victims of crime. I hope that makes sense. So here, we want to see if the company's sick so we can come in and cure the company. So we pull a safety score. But what I'm hearing in the field sometimes are things like, we can help fix your insurance rates. We can look at your safety score and we can look at some of the things going on there and we can, we can fix those tickets or we can, we can fix your safety score. And that's not the right terminology to use because that's not really what we're doing. Uh, first of all, we as associates don't even have the power to do any of those things. What we do is we provide that driver with an attorney anywhere in the country outside of a few different places. So we won't provide them with an attorney in um, Hawaii. We won't provide them with an attorney in Canada because our, our services doesn't do that. But the other place we'll provide them with an attorney to go to court to fight the moving DOT, non-moving DOT violations and some few other things. And I'm not going to get into what the plan does because that's not really what I'm doing here. But what in turn, what happens is the attorney fights the ticket. If that attorney can get it reduced or dismissed, the judge gives that attorney an order of dismissal, which then some way finds its, its, its way in the hands of the safety manager or the safety director or whomever that accused this information. If you don't know what any of this means, then it's probably not for you. Like meaning that this part what I'm talking about is probably not for you because you would know what it means. So don't like start looking this stuff up because you probably don't do CDL or work within that space. So I'm gonna give some other examples here shortly, but I wanted to talk about this first because this is really why I decided to write the, the do the video. Uh, for my, my people on Legal Shield who are doing uh, what I'm doing. So, when that data queue happens, and again, that's a process that I'm not going to talk about, but long story short, the idea is if the, if, if, if the charges have been reduced or dismissed, then when it's data queue and that safety manager or safety director wins that case, then the points are reduced or dismissed, which helps the safety score. But we can only do that for tickets that they get after a driver has been enrolled in a service. And what I'm hearing in the field sometimes is like, we can go into your safety score and pull something that already happened and fix it. And that's not what we're promoting. I hope that's not what you're saying, because if you are, you're overselling and you're making that company think that, hey, this is our safety score and you can go and look at these things and fix these things and fix our safety score. And that's really false. It's, it's really misleading. And it's, it's really, I mean, it's totally incorrect. So I want you guys to understand that that's not what we're doing. We're making sure anything that happens after the drivers or driver enrolls in our service, then we can give them a better shot by having a qualified attorney go to court. Don't oversell it. When we're talking about insurance, we can help stabilize insurance. We can assist in stabilizing insurance. How? Because every year or in some states like Pennsylvania, uh, every six months, the insurance company for that trucking company, their transportation company, is doing a review or an overview or whatever they call it when they come back in and run the driver's license of the people who are on paper for driving for that company. And if they've got hits on their, on their MVR or CSA hits, it affects the insurance rates of the company. We can't come into the company and say, hey, you got a really bad insurance rate and we're going to fix that. Because that's not really what we're doing. Can we essentially do that? Can we make it better for them? We can, but that's not a promise that I would make. What I would go in there and say is, we took a look at your safety score. 
We took a look at kind of what's going on with you all. And by the looks at some of these violations and citations, it looks like these are some things that our attorneys would be able to go to court and deal with if they happen again. Why is this important to you? Because when these things happen, let's take for instance, a driver gets 15 miles over the speed limit, which for a truck driver or a CDL license holder, that is a serious violation, right? A serious violation. Well, what happens if an attorney goes to court and gets it dropped down from over 15 miles over the speed limit to 11 to 14 miles over the speed limit? Well, it's no longer a serious violation, which means it doesn't weigh as heavy on that company. So if we did that with 10 tickets over the next six months, then when their insurance reviews them, then they won't take as much of a hit. So the insurance may still increase, but not as much as it would. So we're helping to stabilize it a little bit and we're keeping it from going crazy because we're minimizing some of the hits that it's going to take. And some things will get dismissed depending on what that driver did and whether that attorney can deal with it or not and what state it's in. We could never guarantee any of those things. And I'm putting this stuff out there because this product can be sold and it may still make sense to have even though we can't guarantee everything. And sometimes we get in the mindset of overselling things because we want to make the sale or what I say in the sales, in the sales realm is, <coughs> excuse me, um, people can smell commissions on your breath. What does that mean when I say people can smell commissions on your breath? That means that you're selling something and people can tell that you're telling them whatever you need to tell them so that they spend money and you make a commission. So you shouldn't sell that way. You should always be selling for the customer. You should always be selling the customer what they need, not what they can afford, what they need. So if they can afford a $100 package, you don't sell them that because they can buy it. You sell them a $50 package if that's all they need. So don't oversell. Sell them what they need because if you have to upsell them later on because they need something else, that ability is there. So I would just, I would just really highly suggest that you make sure that you don't do not oversell when you're doing um, sales in general. Uh, so another example. So we talk to a company and in in, in we tell the drivers, hey, look, we have an attorney that will go to court for anything. And really, we will go to court for anything. But sometimes it's 25% discount and sometimes it's at no additional cost. You need to make that clear to your customer so that the customer does not uh, think that that plan will do anything at no cost. And they think the $30 a month that they're paying or the $32.95 if it's not in a group space that they don't they don't think that, that that cost is covering everything. So just guys again keep in mind overselling. You got to build relationships with these companies that you're dealing with. You are selling a product when it comes to legal shield that's a residual income product with no contract. So don't lie to your customers because they can cancel. Don't oversell a product because they can cancel and all you do is affect your book of business and affect whether or not you get retention or not. And I'll do another video on retention that will tell you about how your, your residual income can drop significantly over one or two points of retention. That's a whole nother video for a whole nother time. But I'm just telling you, you're, in, you're selling a product that's residual income, which is a big deal. But also, every gift has a curse, right? Every pro, there's a con. We always know that every scenario and in this scenario residual in income is fantastic but guess what and this company with this product is also tied to the fact that there's no contract and you're not locking them into anything that they can't get out of so don't lie to your customer don't oversell your customer so when you go in and talk to a trucking company what are you saying hey we can help you out right we can help you out we pulled your safety score and we saw some of the violations and citations that your company is getting. And we want you to understand that we can help stabilize your insurance rates by doing these things. We can look at what's happened to you guys in the past and let you know if you get a ticket like this again and the qualified attorney goes to court and we can get it reduced or dismissed, that helps your safety score. Now we can go on and fix things that are already broken. Even if that's possible, because there may be some crazy circumstance where you can do that with some specific situation, right? You know how we say it, like some crazy situation under the sun where that could happen. That is not, that should not be your pitch. If that example can happen every now and then, then hey, look, that should be every now and then. So just keep in mind, let's not oversell no matter what you're selling, but particularly for my people in Legal Shield that's selling a CDL membership, do not oversell. So.
some other things. You're out in the marketplace, you walk in the community, you're selling whatever product you're selling. Always be honest and transparent and always tell people when you don't know the answer to something. That's sales, guys. This is sales 101. This is really simple sales things that will help you build a relationship. No matter what product you're selling, people are always buying you. Always brand yourself as having a, being a person with integrity. Because the minute you're unintegrous, it doesn't matter what product you're selling. Once you're unintegrous, anything you go to sell, nobody's going to trust you. But if people trust you, they'll buy anything from you. So the way to gain your customer base, the way to really build a, a book of business, no matter what you're selling, is to be straightforward with people. Uh, if you say, I'm gonna talk, I need to talk to you for five minutes, let it be five minutes. If you tell them the product is going to do a specific thing, it should do that specific thing. If the product gets updated and it no longer does that specific thing or that specific thing changes in nature, then you should call your customers or send an email to your customer base. You should take the time out to update them so that they know that things change before they use it and find out the wrong way. You guys are business owners. You have to understand when you're doing sales, even if you're not a business owner, if you work for a company and you're in sales and you're watching this video, this is how you eat. This is how you put food on the table. And once you once you um, master the art of sales, you can sell anything. And when you realize that building relationships is more important than the product you're selling, when you realize that building relationships is more than how charismatic you are, you understand that your sales and your book of business and your success in the sales space will be more based on how you deal with your customers. When your customer has an issue, you go in and you fight for that customer. You fight for your customer base. If that customer drops off your books, you pick up the phone and you give them a call and you say, hey, I realize Mr. or Mrs. Uh, Jackson, that um, your membership was no longer active. And what I see most times is that a person's bank information has changed and that's why. Is that what happened in your case? Because I'm sure you probably didn't just drop the membership because I know you told me how much you was going to be able to use it. Have that conversation with them so that they can get the membership back. Hold on to the membership. Keep your business on the books. Your, your best customer is the customer that you already have. So you don't always have to find a whole bunch of new customers. Sometimes servicing your current customers will get you more business. I'm not saying you shouldn't still prospect. I'm not saying that you shouldn't put it in your schedule to, to open up new accounts and create new business. All I'm saying is maintaining your current customer base will get you more fresh business. It happens all the time. Do not oversell because it becomes an unintegrated situation. When people go to use it, sometimes they'll still hold on to it, even though you lie to them because they still like the product, but they won't send you referrals. They won't send you referrals. So again, keep an open relationship, be transparent, uh, tell the truth about the product. If they call you and say, hey, how come this doesn't work? Or how come the product doesn't do that? Say, well, unfortunately our product doesn't do that. Uh, and if they ask you a question that you can't answer, say, you know what? I'm not really sure about that answer. Uh, let me go ahead and call one of my supervisors. Let me call somebody else I work, with, I work with that has more experience and I'll get back with you. I may call you with them on the line or I may just call you back with the answer. All we, People can understand that. People can respect that. So again, sales guys, don't oversell it. Do not oversell and under deliver. And you will hear that from everybody, from the likes of Grant Cardone, from the likes of Jim Rohn. If you go back and listen to Zig Ziglar material, he'll tell you that. The best of the best will tell you that. So this is all stolen for me. And plus it's me being uh, transparent with you guys because I'm in the field. I've been in sales for years. And I understand that when you, when you, when you create a, t a, t a relationship that has tension between you and the customer, when your, tr your customer doesn't trust you, you can tell when you talk to them. You can tell when they don't necessarily believe what you say because you've lied to them before. And sometimes they will keep your product, even though you weren't honest with them, but they won't send you referrals and they won't upgrade. They won't buy more. They won't, you know, they won't buy anything else from you. So just keep that in mind. So guys, I'm gonna keep this one under 20 minutes. I hope this was helpful to you all. Um, Robert Dunbar, Training by Dunbar. I'll give you some sales tips here, mainly about overselling. Again, subscribe to my channel, hit the like button if you like the information, and also hit the notification bell. Throughout this video, you probably saw some banners going over my head like this, right? With a little eye for information. Look, 
hit those and it's going to have information concerning some of the stuff I talked about. Maybe another video I shot and maybe somebody else's channel that talks a little bit more in detail about what I was just talking about or it might just be a poll question. So Robert Dunbar Training by Dunbar signing off. Look forward to seeing you guys on the next video. You guys have a fantastic evening.